Right, in this demonstration, uh, I'm just going to run through uh, some elements of the setup with PayPal. Um, and again, we're starting logged in as the administrator, which I've done already. And you want to go to the WooCommerce menu entry on the left and uh, choose Settings. And when the page loads, you'll see that there's a whole raft of settings here covering general, the catalog, pages, tax, shipping, and, and all the rest of it. And I'm just going to run through each of these just to, to show you the highlights. A lot of this you can probably forget about. Uh, but certainly, under the general tab, you do need to set the location. Uh, you need to choose the currency, obviously, and allowed countries. Now, you know, if you if you leave it at all countries, you are running the risk again of having um, guys in Romania and Russia and whatever trying to scam you out of goodness knows what. So my um, recommendation here again would be um, to to choose your your countries fairly carefully and conservatively, certainly the United Kingdom. Um, I mean, I think that takes in Ireland as well, doesn't it? Or does it? Let's see. Uh, well, you got the Isle of Man. I mean, it's probably a safe enough option. Um, Ireland, where are we? No, so. Um, I think United Kingdom and the Isle of Man, but again, you know where your market lies. You know, maybe people in France are, are happy to shop with you, whatever. But certainly restrict the specific countries. Um, <clears throat> down here, we've got uh, checkout, enable guest checkout, no account required. I would probably say disable that, force people to register so that you know who you're you're dealing with. If, on the other hand, you may want to just, um, you know, leave it uh, undisabled. So, um, you know, guest checker, see how it goes. Um, there's nothing else, I think, in here that's uh, of any significance. Okay, so we can save those changes. Um, having a look at the catalogue, the default sorting is, is fine. Um, you want to show products rather than subcategories and so on. So again, just leave this the way it is. Um, it might be useful to redirect to the cart after you've successfully added something to it. Um, but again, you can go back and change this if you don't like it. Um, product data, we've enabled the SKU field, maybe you don't want to do that. Um, I don't think you, you really want to enable any of this stuff. Um, pricing options, how the currency appears, the image options, I've, I've set this up for you and, and you'll see that both the catalogue images and the single product images are fairly small at 150 by 150 pixels and I've done that. Uh, principally because all the images that were in your old website were, were quite tiny really um, but if you actually start to you know photograph your own uh, products and whatnot you've got bigger images then you can come back and change this right uh, pages I don't think you need to change any of this to be honest um, the terms uh, and conditions page, it might be useful to uh, to change that. Um, I've got a terms and conditions template that I can probably put in there for you. Um, otherwise, all of these are fairly standard. You don't really want to mess about with them. So again, save the changes if you've made any. Uh, inventory. Um, stock management is enabled. I mean, what this means basically is that in a high turnover website, um, if if you run out of items, um, 
you can you either have the option to um, say that you know it's out of stock but it's on back order or you have the option just to stop any further transactions um, I, I don't know I, I'm guessing that your turnover is not that high so you know if you get an order for something that you haven't actually got in stock you can send a quick email and say you know we're going to take a, a week or something to, to get it to you and, and, uh, and that would do fine so uh, again you know go through this and make your own um, decisions Uh, tax. Let's wait for the page to load again. Here we go. Um, you can enable uh, taxes. Uh, you can choose whether the prices are in or exclusive for VAT. Again, I don't know whether you're VAT registered, um, but this is something that you can read. It's all fairly self-explanatory. Um, display prices during the checkout excluding or including tax um, again I, I don't really know what your options are here so it's something for you to to browse and make your mind up on uh, shipping shipping calculations again uh, I noticed that a lot of your prices are including post and packing so uh, I, I would say probably that um, you you don't really need to enable shipping calculation or whatever. Um, the shipping destination shipped to the billing address by default or only shipped to the user's billing address. This is all as you're probably well aware to um, counter a credit card fraud. You know, so that if somebody steals a card and they use it, whatever they buy will actually be delivered back to the owner of the card. You know, which is um, a useful safeguard. Uh, shipping methods, here we go, free shipping. Uh, first of all you can select free shipping and then you can drag and drop these uh, to order them. So you've got free shipping is enabled and it's top of the line. So save the changes there. Uh, payment gateways, right? Now this is the this is the important one for you. Um, you really just need PayPal, I think. Uh, although check payment and cash and delivery and everything, it's up to you. But I I would um, So pay, if you select PayPal, we've enabled PayPal standard. Um, the description, the PayPal email. Now this is, you'll be familiar with this if you've got a PayPal account already. You put in your PayPal email and uh, the receiver email. So your PayPal email might be, you know, payments at Glenside Tackle or whatever. Uh, the receiver email may well be accounts at Glenside Tackle. Um, you've got a, an, an invoice prefix if you need it. On all of these, by the way, look, you can just um, click on it and, and you'll get some sort of explanation. Or well, you don't even have to click, you just have it over it. Okay. Um, gateway testing, uh, that's your PayPal sandbox. It's quite complicated to use, even for a developer, frankly. So uh, I would probably uh, recommend that you uh, put a product in your shop uh, and cost it at uh, 50p for example and uh, disable the sandbox and then when you set your products up run through the whole process with your 50p product uh, make sure that it all works as advertised and then what you can do is, is just pop back into PayPal and refund your 50p if, if you choose to uh, for yourself so um, Let's just save the changes there as well. Now, again, just to recap, you, you could see down here that although we'd selected PayPal, 
the there were two other statuses that were were set now if we go to direct bank transfer click on backs if you disable that and then save the changes and then go back to payment gateways you can see that that's now disabled and if we go to check payment and disable that okay and save the changes so you can see that we've now we started off with three um, gateways we've disabled all the other payment methods and we're simply left with PayPal and that's at the top of the list and that is the only one that will be um, you know presented clicking on uh, emails <clears throat> there's, there's a number of emails that are fired off you know through the process uh, to the purchaser to say you know thank you for your payment uh, to you to say that so and so has just bought such and such uh, and uh, various emails that come back from PayPal as well um, again just you know, go through this uh, in, in slow time on your own and, and you'll be able to make sense of it I'm sure um, the text to appear in the footer of the email um, powered by WooCommerce um, I, I would probably take that out actually because um, I, I don't think you should tell people really what payment system you're using there are ways they can find out it's not difficult but if you start advertising the payment system that you're using then it does make it very easy for somebody to um, you know to try and uh, and hack the, the the site so for preference I would remove that just keep them in, in ignorance on that uh, save the changes there and the final one is integration and this is just allowing you to uh, insert your Google Analytics ID um, and to add uh, to various tracking codes and so on which frankly on a, a website like yours I think you can completely forget about Google Analytics is probably the only one that you really want to uh, to be bothered with uh, and that's quite simple you can sign up for a Google Analytics account and uh, you get a reference number which you you just pop in there and Bob's your uncle okay and that uh, that concludes the uh, the, the run through basically.